This was my first dive. My name is Alex Khan. I grew up in the Kallax conurbation as a refugee from England, diving for scrap in the Nile Delta and the Mediterranean sludge. I always wanted out, even before I washed up in North Africa. Everyone wants out. Out of poverty, out of disease and filth, out of earth. But the option just doesn't exist for the overwhelming majority of humanity. I never looked up at the sky. What was the point? The treasures were all below, in the sludge. Where there's muck, there's brass, as they say. And those treasures could be traded for scop, for yeast, for distilled water. Even something to get the stink of the black mud off of me for a little while. And to get me stinking drunk or off my face for long enough to feel human again. I never dared to hope for more. It's hope that kills you every time. But then I got a message that changed my life. Some great uncle or something had died and he was both old-fashioned and, relatively speaking, loaded. He'd left his little fortune to me and none of the many, many women in my extended family. Neo-traditionalism turned out all right for me, I suppose. So I dared for once to hope, with the opportunity that that windfall gave me, and I got out. I sold everything he'd left me, the little apartment, the art, all his treasures, all of it. And some of the treasures that I'd kept from when I was diving. I gave it all up for a different kind of diving, deep diving in space. A ticket on a shuttle and a shot at living on Karam Station. I was going to dive space now. Chase the legends and the scraps of the RC lore. See something new. Maybe even find something that could get us all out. Or if not that, at least get me some comfort of a kind I'd never even considered possible. The station wasn't what I was expecting. I... I don't know what I was expecting. It was people, not so different to those who congregated in the vomit of the Nile. They were just better off, better smelling, and lugging different equipment. I waited for as long as I could to travel. Some of it was fear, but even with my diminishing little fortune, life on Karam was better than I had ever lived before. I wanted some time to enjoy it, before diving space and facing death, especially since I was going to go alone. I was never great around people. That was more daunting to me than alien worlds or strange horrors that the old hands had told me were lurking somewhere out there. When my money got low, I spent the rest of what I had on supplies to have the best chance of surviving, and I put in, volunteering for a trip. The one-man ships the Assi left behind are called Circles. They're round ships about ten metres across, with the hull cast from a single piece of the strange metal that long race, lost race used. There's a sort of hum to RCA metal, a barely perceptible something when you touch it with bare fingers. They wanted me to name this ship, this place that would be my home or my grave for the coming weeks. I didn't much care to name it. It made it all seem too real. I asked what the previous passenger had called it. The Wicked Albatross, they said. I laughed at that and said that name would do me fine. Embrace your fate, I thought, and the albatross around your neck. Perhaps God or the universe would find the irony too cheap a joke and leave me alone. Three weeks I spent in that ancient flying coffin, alone, crowded in by my own supplies, reading, listening to music, running around and around in that tiny space once I'd eaten and drunk enough to make room, and going slightly mad. The RC liked gravity a little stronger than we like it. The upside of that was it was relatively easy to stay in shape, even with the constricted exercise. Three weeks is under the average transit time, so they tell me, 
but it was still hellish. Other than the sheer boredom of it, things were thankfully uneventful. But next time, hang the shame of it, I'm bringing some holographic porn with me. I was trying to find new and creative ways to hide the baggies of shit and piss I'd accumulated over three fucking weeks when the ship finally seemed to slip back into normal space with the slightest of jolts. And then we were sliding into dock. From what little I could observe from the ship's inscrutable control panel, this was some orbital station inside a hollowed out asteroid, not unlike Karum station itself a Titan capsule of RC technology and construction. The long boring wait had cured me of the jitters and the fear. I was just so desperate to get out of that flying coffin that I barely cared. So I donned my vac suit, opened up the portal in the side of the ship and ventured out to stretch my legs on solid, alien ground. After the A-metal lock cycled, my suit took over. Everything in the green, it should have been, the suit was brand new. I stepped down from the free-floating edge of the ship onto the decking of the asteroid, an interlocking regular jigsaw of A-metal plates. The docks were almost empty, scrubbed clean by age of any glyphs or markings that ever might have been here, not that the RC were known for their decoration. Just as well, I couldn't see much of anything anyway. There was a thick mist rolling about, stirred by my sudden arrival and the air displacement of the ship. It was oily, swirling, and visible like glycerine vapour. It made it hard to see far, but one thing at least was apparent. The large doors at the far end of the chamber were the only way deeper into the complex. I began to notice a strange pounding behind my eyes, constant and throbbing just beneath conscious notice, unless I thought about it, which made it sharper and clearer. It was unsettling. I hadn't felt it while I was in the ship, but out here, it was there. Nothing some painkillers couldn't deal with, but it was unsettling nonetheless. As I moved through the mist, the space seemed cavernous after being enclosed in the ship with all my junk. I passed by fragments of foil, carbon scoring, empty boxes on their sides. The mist shifted and teased at these items, this detritus, remnants from whatever the RC were doing here those thousands of years ago. The mist reminded me of the swirling silt of the Nile when I dove in water rather than space. Then, it was generations of human excrement and microplastics, trash and treasure. Fuck knows what this shit was. Hopefully, it would hide treasures as well. The suit computer was manfully trying to analyse the atmosphere. From what I could tell, it was typical for an RC station, apart from the mist, which was a string of question marks on the sensor readout that told me nothing. Maybe next time I'll pack a real atmospheric sensor, get better answers. I reached the door and swiped my glove hat, gloved hand across the sensor bulb. The metal rippled and opened and I stepped on through, switching on my suit lights as I did. It didn't help much. It just hit the mist and made it glow. If anything, it reduced visibility. But I preferred the light to the darkness. A short hallway took me to another, larger chamber. I beamed my lights around above the mist, picking out the starkly utilitarian structure. A series of A-metal dividers herded long-dead crowds, presumably, into queues. A processing hub for visitors? Customs stations? No, the RC were too alien for that. We shouldn't make human presumptions. But something like it, maybe a place to welcome visitors to the facility. For all I knew, it was here they gifted people with garlands of flowers and handed them alcoholic drinks, but I doubted it. Who can possibly hope to understand a genuinely alien species? There was an upper level, with translucent panels in the A-metal, viewports perhaps for watching the crowds below. 
They seemed high to human eyes, but we thought the RC were maybe seven feet tall, which seems dangerous for high gravity beings. The detritus of the abandonment was even thicker here, and a pale purple mould grew in the corners and amongst the alien trash. Could that be the source of the mist? And how was it living here on bare metal? I picked my way carefully through the dividers, but I needn't have been so careful. There was nothing to snag on. On the far side there was a sort of desk, like a mushroom, awkwardly high for humanity, extruded from the floor. A metal cubes and data crystals were scattered across it. My first ever alien artifacts. Through the gloves I couldn't feel much, but I took a moment to appreciate the weight and feel of them in my hands before I had stuffed them into the pockets of my carry web. On this far side there was another airlock, a larger one. My boots echoed strangely in the dense and ancient atmosphere as I stomped on, stepping loud deliberately to fill the place with some familiar human noise. I was so alone out here, and the echoes made it seem like I wasn't. Turns out that was a mistake. I found out the moment I cycled the next airlock. Something leapt out at me, spikes and spines, too many legs, chitin and jaws. It was caked in dust like it had lain inert for eons. In its glassy eyes I saw my own terror reflected, and my muscles turned to jelly as I tried to hold it off with arms like wet noodles. Its claws tore into me, shredding the outer skin of the armour plating on my gauntlets, numbing my hands with the impact. In the bulky vac suit I could hardly move, but it was too late to think about that now I had to survive. I fell back, hitting the thrusters on my suit to compensate for the gravity and the cumbersome nature of the suit. They were meant for zero-g manoeuvring, but they'd help a little. I yanked at the fire slinger in its chest sling, twisting it up a point-blank range and opening up with a deafening clatter, spraying the thing in the doorway. It ducked and dived, springing away from me, avoiding the shots that flattened against the A-metal walls and scattered to the floor, while the thing scrambled to pursue me again. It closed the distance rapidly, but leapt right into the clattering fire of the SMG in stroboscopic savagery. Rounds finally found their mark, knocking the creature back and down, cracking the carapace in spots. I braced the gun properly against my shoulder, like they taught me. I kept on firing, tracking the shots on the thing as it scattered across the floor. A round hit the brake in its carapace and severed one of its arms in a splash of ichor. It slipped in its own blood with an angry shriek as the ammo counter on my gun counted down in freefall. Rounds continued to hit the thing over and over, making it stagger, biting pieces out of its flesh and hide until finally it slumped into a bullet-riddled heap, steaming and dripping. Dead, I hoped. It was, I think, what they call a taker, and if it had taken me, there would have been no one to rescue me. These things are apparently found on many RC sites. Not that that's any comfort at all, quite the opposite. The vac suit had to go. If there were more creatures like this here, I had to be more mobile to stand a chance. Shaking on legs of rubber, I tramped back to the ship and swapped the suit for a breathing mask, fatigues and body armour. The smoke and mist might be deadly. The takers were certainly deadly. It was annoying, time-wasting, oxygen-wasting. I'd already been at this an hour, moving so carefully through these chambers. I had only a handful of trinkets to show for it. Nothing worth the trip. At least I could stow them now, next to the suit, and toss my shit and piss bags out into the alien landing bay. Perhaps some aeons since, some other species would be poking curiously at bags of my fossilised shit for insight into the ancient race of space monkeys. Knock yourself out, hypothetical alien xenoanthropologist. Facing death had cured me of any reverence I might have felt for the place, for the RC, for the things they left behind, for the sanctity of the dock. I walked back quickly to the dead creature. 
Without the vac suit, I felt more vulnerable, but at least I could move faster, run more freely and efficiently. The mist felt oily where it made its way to my skin and clothing, and it left a residue. That pressure behind the eyes, that constant headache, that felt worse without the suit, closer to the front of my awareness, throbbing in my brow. Beyond the fragments of chitin, the ichor and the spent rounds from the gun, which I now held at the ready with a fresh cassette slammed home, the next corridor doubled back on itself, extending 10, maybe 15 meters before another doorway. This time I had my gun up, ready, sweeping the torchlight across the mist-choked room, just as well. I noticed that the mist here seemed higher, falling in a slow-motion waterfall from the ceiling. It drew my eye up to a swarm of worm-like creatures in a great ball, exuding the mist as they crawled across the ceiling and each other. They looked horrifying. I've always had a problem with grubs and maggots. In the light in here, which was off at the edges of human perception, bleeding into the infrared and ultraviolet, they were even more disgusting somehow but this time I was taking no chances. I wasn't going to give them time to attack me. I just fired. It only took a couple of bursts for the ball to break apart, for the creatures to rain down onto the ground and to squirm in all directions, seeking ducts and pipes, drains and fittings, slimy little things, a mobile hive of them, like horned, limbless beetles, armoured grubs. I hadn't seen anything like them in the briefings so the handful of dead ones that were left were intact. Those are the ones I took as samples, triple wrapping them in plastic baggies just in case, wiping off the sticky epoxy-like slime from their bodies against the walls. I'd left a human handprint, another puzzle for my future alien archaeologist, I suppose. There were four doors and an open arch in this chamber, so I just went with my gut and took the leftmost door. A couple of old hands were superstitious about this. Always go left, they said over drinks on Karam. Gun up and scanning for trouble, like I'd seen in action hollows, though I didn't really know what I was doing. I swept through another door and found another chamber, long and narrow. The mist was thinner here, and through it I could see some new fresh horror slithering across the floor. A mass of tentacles, some raised questing the air like snake tongues, a creature drawn from the ducts by the thunder of gunfire or the stink of alien blood. I still wasn't going to be taking any chances, and I opened up straight away as the thing hauled itself towards me by its tentacles, dragging itself over the alien racks and lockers that filled this room. I fired down into the mist where I thought its body should be, tentacles were blown apart and an ungodly shrieking sound came out of the mist as I finished the thing off and slammed another fresh cassette of rounds into the SMG. I was eating ammo at a hellish pace. But I was starting to feel like a badass, murdering all these alien monstrosities. I wanted to bite my nails, ease some of this tension despite my hands getting sticky with alien goo as I tried to gather more samples. But I couldn't risk lifting the mask. I couldn't take samples this time. The thing was breaking down too fast, turning to a greyish sludge before I could baggy any of its parts. I let it be, left it to drain into the floor grills, out of my sight. Another airlock. I hustled down the next corridor gunlight unable to penetrate the depths of the length of it. I turned again through another portal into what seemed like a lounge of some sort. Extruded, extruded seats in peculiar and outsized proportions clustered around a low central plinth just above the curls of mist. A smooth metal pyramid with a glassy protrusion sat loose on the plinth about the size of my fist, specked with dust and mist residue. It took only a moment to slide it into a pouch. Maybe it would be worth something to someone. I kept moving, faster, breathing harder now, 
fogging the faceplate of the breather mask faster than the demister could compensate. Move and scan, move and scan, check the floors, the ceiling, any sort of alcove, any sort of cover. Another door, another chamber, check your ammo count, check your oxy level, check your battery. Swaying curtains in here of some sort of silvery grey fabric, hanging from RC machines built into the roof, unsettlingly like a nest of metallic spiders. What purpose? I couldn't tell you, but my blade wouldn't cut the cloth free of the machines above. All I could do was take a long piece that was laying on the floor, big enough to maybe be a cloak or something, but it crumpled and compressed into a pouch like tissue paper. I'd have to turn back soon, but there was one, maybe two more chambers I could search properly before I had to make my way back. Sweat was pouring down my face under the mask in ticklish trickles, but I had to press on and ignore it. Another empty chamber, nothing but the omnipresent mist. But as I moved through it towards the next airlock, I felt a sudden and abrupt pain on my hand. I almost dropped the SMG in shock, watching in disbelief as teeth marks manifested on my hand. Needle pointed, sharp, blood began to drip from my fingers. It wasn't a deep bite, but I wasn't about to take any extra chances in this place. So I stopped, disinfected the wound, and gave myself a couple of broad-spectrum shots from the medkit, hoping to stave off any infection or venom. Invisible creatures biting me? No, that was quite enough. I about faced and began the march back, following the route I'd already taken. Barely a handful of chambers into this alien facility and I was already turning back. But screw it. Let them come back with a bigger team. Maybe I was better as a prospector for others to follow up. The plan had been to make it back to the docks and use the rest of my oxy just tearing junk out of the walls to sell. Hoping I'd stumble onto something good. But when I got back to the ship, I had company. A pair of scaly, serpentine creatures. Somehow absurd, but at the same time threatening, disquieting. Each as long as a tall man, as thick as a thigh, ropes of scaled muscle, glittering black eyes, heads at both ends. Amphisbana? Is that the mythological creature? That's what they made me think of. Their skin rasped the metal with a sound like nails on a chalkboard as they crawled over and investigated the ship. My ship. I didn't have time, and I was low on ammunition. I had to find a way past them. I stayed crouched in the last doorway, fumbled one of the empty ammo cassettes and flung it across the room as far as I could, which isn't much in RC standard gravity. They didn't have ears, but they took the bait, heard it somehow. As they crawled after the sound, I ran, flinging myself into the ship just in time as I heard their bodies slamming into the hull. Like someone striking a bell. No more of this shit. It was time to go. Three weeks to spend a handful of hours in this place. But this time the ship felt like liberation, not a prison. And once the slamming against the hull stopped, I hit the sequence to take me home and settled in to be bored. Another mistake. A week out from home, the ship's alarms triggers. It registered that we dropped out of warp, but checking the screens, that wasn't true. There was nothing outside. We were still moving through warp. But then I noticed it. Air was leaking. Part of the ship, at least hadn't continued through warp. There was a coin-sized hole in the A-metal hull, and my precious oxygen was leaking out from it rapidly. A-metal didn't normally break, so there weren't any hull patching kits to speak of. I tried to fix it by improvising with suit seals, but it wouldn't hold. I spent the next week in my vac suit, hooked up to the oxy tanks directly, and unable to eat any of my proper rations. It was a long, long, shitty week. The pyramid, as it turned out, was worthless. Nothing but a knick-knack. So I've kept it. A paperweight to remind me of my first mission. It sits on my desk in my rented apartment now, mocking me 
holding down the paperwork to request another expedition. Was all of this a mistake? So, yes, I played Alex T's Across the Thousand Dead Worlds. Managed to have a little bit of fun with it. But it has a couple of issues for me. Some of that is just the the format of playing such games, single player games. I didn't feel like there was enough characterization of the of the chambers and so on as I went through them, so I had to add that. And the report you've got is after I went back through and kind of novelized the process for, for want of a, of, a, of a better term. Rules-wise, it mostly worked fine, but I think some of the creatures are too hard to hit <laughs> with ranged combat bullets being hard to dodge. And the system as is really punishes playing as a, as a single player. Because to defeat monsters, you have to shoot or attack to knock them down. And then it's after that you can do damage to them. So unless you're spending all of your stamina on extra quick attacks to pile those wounds up, then you're often not going to take them down. So I think a more conventional hit point system or, or something might work as a good fix for that. Uh, but I'll have to experiment to find out. Do you want me to carry on with these adventures? See what happens? Or was this a waste of time? <laughs> Let me know. Zang. I have a woefully undersubscribed subreddit. So please do me a favor, if you're a Redditor, head on over to r slash postmortem studios and talk about anything related to any of my shenanigans. Peace.